All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about the tactile knife company Maverick. And I thought it would be fun to bring out some other options to kind of showcase other American companies taking advantage of the expiration of, of the patent of the much beloved Axis Lock. So without any further ado, guys, let's jump right into the tactile turn Maverick. And let's talk about what I think about it, its performance, and all that fun stuff. So admittedly, I haven't had a whole lot of hands-on time with this blade just yet. I am borrowing it from a fellow YouTuber, but I thought it would be fitting to do a video on it considering that I have a handful of other, you know, crossbar or axis style locks from other companies. Of course, there's the Hogue Deca, um, you guys probably think of, there's also the TRM uh, Shadow that I think is one that is very cool and really flies under the radar because TRM is a little bit more of a smaller company. And I think that personally, this is the closest um, direct competitor to the Tactile Knife Co. Um, Maverick and of course unfortunately this is a little bit of a different looking Maverick but I personally think that these two are really good um, kind of competitors almost because of course they are all also competing against Benchmade once again the aforementioned Hogue Deca um, but I think that it is interesting to talk about um, the shadow in this one because the G10 version of the Maverick is very similarly priced to the shadow when you can find a shadow so I think it's worth talking about these knives and we'll do a little bit of compare and contrast as we get into the video so first off like I said this is the Maverick and I think it's a pretty interesting knife I'm definitely uh when i first saw it like i wasn't the largest fan of it i definitely thought it was like a kind of interesting knife but nothing that really really sparked my interest and i will say i would say probably the worst part about this knife is that it is a very generic knife uh looking blade especially i think with the titanium the way that this is um, unfortunately i think that this blade in my opinion at face value kind of looks a lot cheaper than it is unfortunately Unfortunately, and this make no mistakes, it's the titanium, mill titanium version is a $350 plus dollar knife. So this is not a cheap knife at all. And I think that unfortunately it looks very generic and it looks a lot like a steak knife to me. And these handles really do not help with that whole steak knife or cheap kitchen knife um, aesthetic because while they do feel good in the hand, this thing looks a lot like one of those cheap cheap um, like stainless steel kind of you know kitchen knives that you would get of course this is a folder so it's a little bit different in that regard but when it's opened up the blade aesthetics the you know blade shape blade thickness the way that the handle looks it just looks like a very um, cheaper knife and so that's why I was never initially drawn to the Maverick personally was because it just for me never really felt quite like a $350 knife. And while I will say this, when you do take a look at these titanium handles, they are well machined. You guys can hopefully see the camera's probably gonna suck at picking it up, but there is, you know, a lot of very fine texturing to this. But unfortunately, when you look at it, you know, from about this far away, you can't see any of that fine texturing or grooving. And unfortunately that is, once again, just leads to a cheaper aesthetic. And because this is just raw titanium for the handles, there's no anodizing, there's no coloring to it. There's nothing that really makes it look special. It really kind of begs the question of why did you choose titanium? Especially, <clears throat> especially moreover, because these are titanium inset handles over a steel liner. So unfortunately, you know, titanium is usually used as a material to reduce the weight of the knife. <clears throat> but unfortunately, that's not really how this knife works because these handles are still, or this knife as a whole is still pretty darn hefty. Like this is still a pretty heavy knife. Um, you definitely feel it. Now, I don't necessarily mind that. Um, knives like the Benchmade 940 Osborne for me, I actually like, you know, because it's thinner, because it's smaller, I actually like having the, you know, kind of weight to it because it makes it feel like, you know, I'm actually holding something. So I, I don't necessarily mind the weight, but unfortunately I think the titanium was 
kind of a missed opportunity with this knife because it's not designed to take advantage of anything like anodization um, or the natural properties that make titanium or can make titanium look nice and unique. And so they just went with this plain, you know, generic G or um, plain generic raw titanium that really does not help with the aesthetic of it at all. So unfortunately, I really don't like it. I feel like it kind of looks cheap in that regard. But as far as the actual knife goes, that's where my mindset kind of changes now. This guy's well and used by its original owner. I've put some use on it as well. Um, I might end up tuning it up, we will see. But I do really like and enjoy the fact that this is entirely made in the US, like some of the other knives that we will talk about. So I enjoy that everything on this knife is made in-house and made in the US um, especially. So that part I do find really cool. And as far as the you know operating mechanism goes, I think it is a really good um, and smooth operating mechanism. I feel like this to me is it's kind of interesting because I feel like this is what the original axis locks felt like. Like when you look at a modern axis lock, they're very snappy and kind of loud and they feel kind of hollow and cheap like hopefully you guys can hear this you know like this is kind of what a modern axis lock feels like sounds like it's gritty but the original and i know like on some of my older griptilians and stuff this is kind of how it sounds it has this more dull thud and i'm gonna bring this close this kind of uh this kind of almost like click or weird kind of almost rubbery sounding stop is what the original axis lock sounded like and it just had this quality feel that it felt like not snappy and not cheap like when you go to pull this you know like you click this it feels very high quality the omega springs feel good and moreover too like i said it has this kind of dull thud when you close that blade and the lock you know helps the blade close it has this dull thud that's very reminiscent of the original axis locks so the more i ended up playing with this maverick the more i actually kind of liked and enjoyed their rendition of the axis lock or crossbar lock and i will say i do think uh, tactile knife co did a really excellent job with this lock and pivot system now if i remember correctly this is not on bearings so it is or should be on washers uh, i can't quite tell from looking at it but it should be on washers and it definitely feels like it, it in a good way you know this has a good amount of move to it where it's not absolutely you know just floppy but it also is very very smooth so overall i really do want to like this knife i just feel like the design and the aesthetics of this knife are unfortunately very generic and that just because it's a generic looking and you know aesthetic knife doesn't necessarily make it bad like one of my favorite knives of all time was the bark river knives aurora and it was literally looked like a, a steak knife and uh, that's not necessarily a bad thing the knife was still very good so let's talk a little bit about the TRM Shadow. So this is the TRM Shadow for those wondering. And this to me was the Axis Lock knife made not by Benchmade and not the Hodeca that really stuck and stood out to me. And I like the Shadow because the Shadow is very similar to the um, Maverick in the regards that it's entirely in-house US made, but it is just a little bit different. I think some of the things that I liked over um, things like the Maverick that the Shadow has is it has these like oversized axis locks and you can see them here, how they kind of protrude out of the handle. And it's not enough to really cause a hot spot if you choke up on the blade. Like you can't really feel these guys, but they protrude just a little bit outside of the handle to make the action just that little bit easier to open and close or get a really positive grip on those axis lock bars. Now, unfortunately, I will say this one kind of misses that dull thud. It has a little bit more of the modern Benchmade click to it, but it still is very well made and it is it uses a very large um, crossbar. So definitely a little bit um, thicker than even the Tactile Knife Co. But I wanna say that it is, um, yeah, definitely thicker than the uh, legitimate Benchmade Axis Lock. So 
definitely, definitely a win there. Now, I think one of the things that I like the most about the shadow is, as you can already tell with the knife in its design, it is very, um, some might say out there, but I really do like how unique the design looks. This is something that, you know, may not appeal to everyone, but it is a very useful shape, especially for a wide variety of EDC tasks. And it is a very useful shape. Like it's very unique, very useful. And I personally like it. And personally, just putting it out there, I might be slightly biased to the shadow because I like my knives, especially my folders that have forward finger choils that I can choke up on that blade. And unfortunately the Maverick does not have that present, but I do really like the fact that I can, you know, get right up on that cutting edge and be in control of it. So it also still worth noting has a you know, comfortable grip back behind the forward finger choil. So regardless to whether you decide to, you know, choke up or choke back, you're still going to have a good grip. Like I said, very unique blade shape as well. And it is a very thin stock of CPM S sorry, CPM 20 CV. So once again, kind of pick your poison. The tactile uses Magna Cut, whereas TRM across the board, whether it's their Neutron, their Atom, whether it's their Nerd, whether it's their Shadow, they, they all use the same stock thickness of CPM 20 CV. So that's kind of just TRM style, but 20 CV is very similar to M390, you know, very similar to CTS 204P. So it's going to be a high performance steel. Um, Magna Cut is going to be a high performance steel as well. Um, but yeah, so other things I like about the Shadow a little bit more than the Maverick, of course, the deep carry clip or loop over is another win in my opinion, though I will say I do give them some points for you know, designing a unique clip for this um, blade. And I will say too, even though it is not deep carry, it still is a fairly deep riding clip. So, you know, basically up to here is going to be hidden um, in your pocket. So still reasonably deep carry. Obviously a deep carry clip is going to fully bury that knife uh, handle in your pocket if that is relevant to you. Other things that are unique about the TRM Shadow, you have these really nice um, kind of facets within the pocket or within the thumb stud where you can put, you know, O-rings for deployment as I have here. And it's just a nice way to add a little bit of color and also too, to give you a little bit of grip for opening your knife. So, you know, take it for what it's worth. These are two different knives. I just thought that, um, you know, especially in the black G10 handled version of the Maverick versus the black G10 handled version of the Shadow, they are very similarly priced knives that do similar things. Obviously, like I said, they're a little bit different, but they are enough of them like in their overall end goal that I thought it'd be, you know, interesting to bring the TRM Shadow into the comparison for this knife. Overall, um, like I said, what do I think of the uh, Tactile Maverick? I think it's a really good starting point for Tactile. Of course, for those who don't know Tactile Knife Co., they started out as the company that still is Tactile Pens. Um, so that is their main bread and butter, is making titanium pens. But I am glad to see more American knife companies springing up and making you know really solid honest to God, good knives. And so I'd say about the only thing I really dislike about the Maverick and why I wouldn't pick one up is just because it's a very generic looking knife. I don't really, I'm not attracted to the aesthetics of it. Um, and I wish that they would offer more colors of G10 handles. And I off, I wish that they would offer, um, you know, different anodization or, you know, coloring to these titanium handles, especially if you're gonna charge an extra $100 for the titanium handles. I think that this as a $350 knife looks way too generic and way too simple to me for, for me to be really attractive. And like I said, they don't necessarily have to change anything about the shape per se, but even if they gave it a nice like flame anno or, you know, just some kind of like stone wash or just something that made it look a little bit more premium, um, I would like that a lot more. So anyways, guys, hopefully enjoyed the video. Hopefully enjoyed taking a look at the TRM Shadow and the Tactile Knife Co. Maverick, along with a few others out there. Um, but yeah. As always, guys, God bless, and I'm out.